Today I'd like to do a video on a little kit that I like to call my H2 Go Bag. This is actually a Go module that integrates into my bug out bag and replaces what I was previously using with my bug out bag, which was an SAS survival pouch based off of the SAS survival guide written by John Lofty Wiseman. So I decided to replace that. It was previously using a fanny pack and I wanted something a little larger so I could store a container for boiling water. And this is what I came up with. In an earlier video, which I called Prepping Circles, I talked about wanting to move forward by using a go bag as a module to my bug out bag so that they could both be carried at the same time. And of course, my EDC would also go uh, with the go bag, so it could be more of a complete system. And that was the approach that I went with for designing this particular kit. So my idea with this kit is that this could be a quick grab and go bag in an emergency or survival situation. For example, if I didn't have time uh, to grab the bug out bag, I could at least grab this one. It'd be real small and quick to grab. And if I did have time, I'd be able to take both this and the bug out bag in an emergency situation. Then this could be stored either on my uh, shoulder or it could be stored inside of the bug out bag itself to make it more of a complete system. As I mentioned, in my earlier bug out bag video, I used the SAS survival pouch, which this particular kit now replaces. And while I do like the SAS survival pouch concept, I tried to go with a different route with this particular kit, and I wanted to integrate Dave Canterbury's 10 C's of survival into this kit. So when we're talking about the 10 C's of survival, we're talking about things like a cutting tool C for cutting. So you'll notice that there's a fixed blade knife there on the side there. We're also talking about things like a cordage. So you'll notice some uh, the shoulder strap is actually using a paracord and uh, we'll talk in a little bit more detail about that later. Uh, another C is a container, so a container for boiling water, uh, combust C for combustion, a way of starting fire, and just the, the 10 C's of survival. I'll list all of those in the description box below. So the 10 C's of survival are completely integrated in this particular kit, and I also added some of the uh, information in the SAS survival pouch. I also provided information or items in here that were based off of uh, Corey London's kits, and also Les Stroud's kits, and a few of my own. So it's all integrated into the small little kit. So let's get started now with this video featuring the H2 Go Bag. As I always try to do with my kit videos, I've created a companion PDF document that you could download by clicking the link in the description box below and includes a list of all the items that I included in this particular H2 Go Bag. And it's organized by item, uh, by the type of item, the price of it. I have some personal comments on why I chose to include it in there. And then I also included this special little section here that I call my survivalist checklist. And basically it's based off of uh, other survival kits that were recommended, uh, the items that a lot of the leading survivalists include in their kits. For example, I have a Les Stroud column, I have a Cody London column, a John Lefty Wiseman column, and I have a Dave Canterbury for the 10 C's of survival. So all the 10 C's are included in this particular kit. And then I also have uh, markings for if one of the other uh, leading survivalists also included one of those items. So some of the items don't even match with any of the ones that they included. Uh, but this has a very comprehensive comprehensive list of everything that's going to be seen in this video uh, and then actually where you could uh, pick them up at as well. So for example, if you're looking at the Zebra F701 ballpoint pen, it's going to take you directly to that Amazon link. The H2 Go Bag is largely built around this Condor H2O water bottle pouch that you see here. Now there's several different water bottle pouch options that you could go with, Maxpedition also makes one, but this one's much more affordable and it's built extremely well. And as you can imagine, it has a water bottle in here, uh, but it has a lot more stuff as you can see by just looking on the sides of it. Uh, but I wanted to go with a water bottle pouch just because water is such an important aspect for survival. Uh, when you're talking the 10 C's of survival, it's a, a container, so it's gonna be used for storing water, also a container for boiling water as well. Uh, but as you can see, I have several different things attached to the outside here just to add additional storage space. So if we look on the sides here, I have uh, two of the Maxpedition GPS slash compass pouches that you see here. Uh, these are previously used in my bug out bag and they've been transitioned over uh, to this uh, go bag that you see here. Now a Condor also makes a similar type pouch. I just happen to use these ones because I already own them. One of the main features of the H2 Go Bag is this paracord shoulder strap that you see here. Now this provides 100 feet of paracord and it was designed by Custom Paracord Creations. So I'll provide a link to Custom Paracord Creations in the description box below, also in the PDF document that you could download. Uh, but this is actually two pieces of paracord. So you have this, lo this long thin one that runs all the way through here, even through the inside portion here. And this is actually like the shoulder pad of the shoulder strap. So you have about 40 feet of paracord in the shoulder pad section of it, a little over 40 feet, and then you have around 60 feet uh, in this 
longer thin area that you see here. So in a survival situation, if you needed some cord, so cordage is if we're talking the 10 seas of survival, uh, you could take off the shoulder pad section of it, get your 40 plus feet of paracord and uh, use that and you would still have the strap. Now, if you needed to, you could also then unwind uh, the remainder uh, 60 plus feet of paracord for the full 100 feet of paracord. So uh, this is a very affordable option and it's not only a, a strap, but it's also your cordage. On the side here, I have my fixed blade knife, and that's going to be C for cutting tool. So uh, this is probably the most important item that you want to have in a survival situation. And this particular one is made by Gerber. This is the Gerber Strong Arm. And this was recommended to me by uh, Chris from Prepared Mind 101. I originally saw it over at SHOT Show 2015. Knew I had to get it. It was confirmed through the gauntlet test. And uh, yeah, it's just a great, great knife. You use for chopping. Uh, I just wanted to have a nice fixed blade knife. And it's very lightweight, actually, uh, but still high quality. This one's made over in uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, so some of the Gerber ones are made uh, overseas, but the quality is much better here over in Oregon. So a fixed blade knife, C for cutting tool. On the other side here, I have my flashlight for illumination. Now in the 10 Caesar survival, they probably call that a candle, but I wanted to have a flashlight just because it uh, provided a little bit more functionality. And so I have my good old Phoenix LD20. I've had this one for over five years now. It still works great. Uh, this is Phoenix is kind of the one that I trust. There's a lot of different uh, fla flashlight manufacturers out there, and I've tested a lot of them. Uh, but I always seem to fall back <laughs> on this uh, Phoenix LD20. Eventually, I'll probably upgrade it to the LD22, which is the newer model. Although this one hasn't failed me yet. So for flashlight, I have a Phoenix LD20. Before going through the main section of the H2 Go bag, I'm going to go through all these external pockets that you see here. So we'll start off first with this front one that's built in uh, to the Condor H2O uh, water bottle pouch. So I'm going to just take everything out of here just to show you to save time. Here are all the items out of that front pouch of the H2 Go bag. Let's start here on the right. So I have one of my mini Medi kits. And as you can see, this one's a little bit beefed up because it's using one of the lock sack bags, uh, which I recently did some testing on and just kind of fell in love with these particular bags. They're high quality and you're not gonna get the punctures that you would with the cheaper arts and crafts version. And this one's very similar to all my mini Medi kits that uh, you've seen on my channel. Although this one has uh, some, uh, some additions in here with uh, modern wound dressings based off of my recent talks uh, with the Mountain Art. And so you'll notice that we have some, some Aquacell Extra with the AG, that's uh, the silver, uh, just great stuff in here. You also There's also some Tegaderm and some other uh, modern wound dressings in there, in addition to all the other kind of boo-boo items uh, that are included in my mini first aid kits. So a first aid kit. Next we have some writing instruments. So I have my Sharpie pen, good old... You know, always want to have a Sharpie pen with me. And then I have uh, probably my favorite uh, pen. This is uh, the Zebra F701. Previously did a review on it, and you could put the Fisher Space Pen insert in there uh, to just make it an even more awesome pen than it already is. Over here we have a, a notepad. So this is a, a ride in the rain, all weather uh, notepad. This one's a, one of the small ones that you see here. You kind of have to buy them in, in bulk, uh, but they work really well for uh, various kits. So I have a lot of these. Uh, for water filtration outside of a uh, boiling water that we'll see later, I have the Frontier Emergency Water Filter. This is great for multiple gallons worth, just kind of for uh, if I didn't want to take the time to actually boil the water, I could just use this for kind of grab and go uh, water filtration. So, and as you can see, it packs very small. So we have the Frontier Emergency Water Filter. Continuing on, uh, I found that I really don't like getting bit by mosquitoes, so I included some insect repellent. So this is uh, made by Repel. This is kind of the travel size. Uh, if you watch shows like the survival based shows, uh, Naked and Afraid or anything like that, uh, you'll know that they, they're always getting bitten by the bugs, and I do not like getting by, bitten by bugs, so I want to make sure I have some insect repellent. So I just have the Repel over here. Uh, next, what we have over here is a, a, a Ranger pace counter. So this is actually used kind of as, as part of my navigation. Uh, so for being able to tally uh, how far I'm walking, so for tallying distances. So there's uh, different methods for doing this. Uh, maybe I'll do a dedicated video of this later, but basically if you want to count out 100 meters, for example, you're going to do uh, 100 paces with your left foot. Just kind of count that out and keep moving those bands up and you'll be able to pretty accurately tally up how what kind of distance you've been traveling. And it just kind of fits in your pocket or you can just keep it in your hand as you're uh, walking and just a great item to have. So this is a pace counter. 
Uh, next, we have, uh, I recently did a video of this. Uh, this is the Silcock water key. This is kind of a must have item for anyone that's uh, doing any kind of urban preparedness because this is what you would want to have for accessing uh, the water faucets outside of industrial buildings, schools, churches, uh, the, just the outside of uh, urban style buildings. Uh, I recently did a video of this, you'll see it over there. And this is just gonna be how you could get water in an emergency situation. And then last, uh, what I have over here is the Bush Box Outdoor Pocket Stove. Now it doesn't really look like much of a pocket stove. It's in this little nice little bag over here. Uh, but this is actually a folding stove that you can put together and it works extremely well. It's, very, it's a little bit pricey, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very small, uh, not too lightweight, but lightweight enough to include in here. And this is gonna be used for boiling water. So you're gonna put your container on top of it and it's very efficient. You could use the SBIT uh, cubes or also uh, with uh, wood. It's, its primary use is for like twigs and things like that. So I have the Bush Box Outdoor Pocket Stove. Now that we've gone through all the items in that front pocket, let's move over to one of the side pockets. So again, these Maxpedition GPS slash compass pouches are attached to the side here, and I'm using the Blackhawk speed clips that you see here for actually attaching it uh, to the Condor water uh, bottle pouch. So let's open up this particular one. There's not too many items in here. But we have some key stuff. So opening it up here, you'll notice that we have another 10 seasons of survival item. This is cargo tape. So we have, uh, I'm not sure how many feet exactly, but a good amount of Gorilla duct tape. And there's so many different uses for duct tape. Uh, there's a lot of different videos online and on YouTube. Uh, just uh, uh, check it out. Uh, just a awesome item to have. And so a lot of the times for EDC purposes, I'll use a uh, gaffer tape. For a survival situation, I want to have duct tape. And this is Gorilla duct tape. After the cargo tape, the only other item that I carry in this particular pouch is kind of like an Altoid survival tin, although this one's very generic looking. Uh, I wasn't gonna go into details on all the items in here because it's still uh, going under multiple revisions, but I did wanna talk about one of the other 10 C's of survival. Um, this is actually a canvas sewing needle that you see here, and this is gonna be used for repair jobs, for repairing uh, this item, maybe for clothing, uh, things like that. And that's just one of the other 10 C's of survival, and I would pair it with some heavy duty thread that you see here. So I'm gonna be talking about this one in a future video uh, and as you can imagine it's going to be very similar to says, some of my other Altoids kits but I'm still kind of refining it. So signal mirror, uh, some live fire, Bic lighter, mini Bic lighter, things like that. Uh, that'll be for a future video. Anyway the main item I want to show was the canvas needle. All right we've gone through the front pocket and we've gone through one of the side pockets. Let's move on to that final side pocket. So let's open it up. So a few different items in here. Uh, so the first item that we'll go over is a whistle for signaling. And I have it uh, yellow because that matches my uh, communications for the color of prepping. Uh, this is a Fox 40 uh, classic whistle. Uh, works extremely well. Uh, it's a P-list, so you don't have to worry about it with any kind of water or anything like that. But just for signaling, a whistle. Let's continue on. Now I wanted to have a, a fire steel in here for a, a C for combustion. And uh, this was a, a, a real nice one. This one's actually made uh, by Light My Fire. Uh, this is the Light My Fire uh, fire steel. Multiple sparks that you could get out of it. Very high quality. Uh, as you can see, nice fat ferrocium rod that you see over here. So for C for combustion, we have the Light My Fire fire steel. Let's go in there a little bit more. So I have a few of the Espit stoves. Uh, not the SBIT stoves, but the SBIT fuel tabs, uh, and that would actually pair with that uh, with the Bush Box Outdoors pocket stove that you see here. So I have a few of those uh, kind of hidden in here. So two to three, I've actually used one of them for some testing. Uh, so it's just some SBIT fuel tabs if I want to do a quick boil job on the on the go and not really have to gather up any kind of twigs or anything. Just use one of those. Uh, they burn really hot, by the way. And then uh, next we have uh, by I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. It's a Sunto or uh, but it's just a, a compass. So another uh, C for survival uh, compass. Uh, all the survival experts recommend having a compass. Actually, this is the one universal item out of everything that everyone recommends is a compass, and this will be used for navigation, and you could also pair it then uh, with the pace counter as well. So, a compass. All right, we've gone through all the items that are stored externally, either in one of the external pockets or just externally uh, on the PALS webbing of the Condor water bottle pouch. Uh, let's get down to the main storage area of it. So let's open it up and take a look at the items that we have in there. 
Before talking about the stainless steel water bottle, let's quickly talk about uh, these three little sticks of honey. So I included these not only for a, a food source, uh, uh, honey stores extremely well, and this can be a nice little energy boost, but also for a medical first aid tri type treatment. Uh, honey's great for uh, working with burns, as we've discussed with the Mountain RN recently. And uh, because it stores so long, it's just kind of a great option to have in there if you were to have some kind of a burn gel, for example. If that were to, you know, if I was to puncture one of these, uh, the honey wouldn't go bad, uh, the burn gel would evaporate over time. So three sticks of honey, and this is the organic kind. So I tried to get the best quality honey sticks that I could. Uh, but moving on to all the items in here. So we have a 32 ounce stainless steel water bottle. This one's actually made by uh, Gaiet Designs, I think is how you pronounce it. So let's take it out really quick. This is a 32 ounce bottle. And uh, the main reason that I went with it is that it's 32 ounces and it's fairly short. So you saw this one previously in my EDC uh, backpack video, which I recently did. Uh, and actually replaced that one for a different water bottle that I felt thought was better suited for EDC. And this one's better suited for survival because it's a uh, single walled and you're able to boil water with it. Since this H2 go bag may be stored for an extended period of time, I didn't want to have water stored in here, but I do have some items stored in here, and that's uh, food items. So I'm just going to take everything out and put it on the table uh, that I have stored inside of the water bottle as kind of a, a food capsule. Inside of the water bottle, I store some of these hiking or backpacking uh, bars and jerky. And what, right now, one of my favorite ones is the kind bars. You do have to kind of uh, replace them uh, fairly often, but I, I find that they store extremely well. It's not like having a candy bar uh, because it's all uh, these nuts and everything, so it's not gonna melt or anything like that. So I have a couple kind bars in there. And then I also have some of the the Tonka uh, kind of a beef jerky bar. So this one's a buffalo meat, uh, I was able to fit another one in here with uh, cranberries, apple and orange peel, and another one here with uh, more buffalo meat with cranberries. So I was able to fit uh, three uh, Tonka bars in there, some uh, Justin's peanut butter, uh, which is a really great one. Uh, and it's, uh, peanut butter has so much energy and calories in it. Uh, if I could fit more in there, I probably would. I may try. And then I have some uh, double mint gum just uh, to help keep alert, uh, just chewing on something, especially in an emergency situation. Uh, that'd be nice to have. So just kind of a distraction as well. I also store uh, one of these one liter uh, kind of the survival bag water pouches. So I'm able to store an extra liter of water in here. And in a, a true emergency situation, I probably take all of these bars out, put them in here, fill up the water in there, and go on the go and maybe throw this in my pocket so I'd have a little storage uh, container for that. Or I could fill this up with water too. So multiple options for this particular uh, water bottle collapsible pouch. And those are all the items that I store in the actual water bottle. All right, I have a few more items stored inside of the water bottle pouch. Let's take all of those out and talk over them. Here are all the remaining items of the H2 Go bag. Starting here on the far right, we have another C for cotton. This is a cotton bandana. Uh, so many uses that you could do with a bandana, ranging for uh, medical, uh, water filtration, clothing, uh, you name it. There's just a ton of different options. Uh, check it out online. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, so next we have another C for cover, and this is an like emergency bivy. It's one of the favorite one that I have for a lot of my emergency kits. This is made by Adventure Medical Kits, and it's just an emergency bivy uh, just to provide extra warmth if you're having to sleep outside, for example, kind of like a mini sleeping bag. Uh, over here on the far left, you'll see uh, that I have just some uh, black nitrile gloves uh, for any kind of medical purposes. Uh, for example, I'll probably end up storing these in a different location, maybe on the top of the water bottle, so for quicker access, but just right now I have them stored here. And then we have another C over here for container. Uh, this is made by GSI Outdoors. This is a, a GSI Outdoors a mug slash cup, and it actually nests with a lot of the popular uh, water bottles that you see here. I'm gonna take this little option, uh, item out right there. Uh, but it nests with your standard Nalgene water bottle, and also with the water bottle that I'm using here for the uh, Gaiet Designs, also with Clean Canteen. Uh, this is a very, uh, it's great, inexpensive, and it's gonna pair nicely, it does pair nicely, uh, with the Bushbox Outdoors. Uh, outdoor stove. So you could pair these together and uh, boil water quite easily. So uh, last over here, we'll have a little uh, no see mesh that you see here, and then it has a little hairband wrapped around it. And this is also, I have this, it could be used as kind of a very small insect kind of shield, uh, but what I use it for is actually with the water bottle like this, so actually for a first layer of a kind of filtration just to get the nasty gunk out and everything, and then you would uh, use the hairband like that. 
So then if you're at your water source, you can just go like that. It's gonna filter a lot of the big chunks out. And, and then I have a couple of them there just in case one of them gets lost or dirty or if I need to give one away. And those are all the items that are included in that main section of the H2 Go bag. That's gonna do it for this video featuring my H2 Go bag. Again, it's a Go module that integrates into my bug out bag to be used in an emergency situation. So again, this is version 1.0 of this particular bag. So I left uh, plenty of space in here uh, for revisions to add new items in here. So uh, based off of information in the comment section. So please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section regarding this particular bag, things that you think uh, should be added into, maybe revised in there. And I'll be you know, doing minor revisions over the next couple of months. So again, this is based largely off of the 10 C's of survival uh, from Dave Canterbury, also some of the other survival experts, uh, in addition to some stuff that I just wanted to have uh, for my particular uh, needs. So again, leave comments below in the comment section. I left a PDF link in the description box below, which provides all information on all the items that you see in here. So direct links to them if you're interested in any of them. So make sure you download that PDF document and I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the video.